This programme is all about the speaking section of the IELTS test. I'm going to focus on part A, where you'll be required to talk in an interview situation about topics which are really familiar to you, such as sports, work, hobbies, free time activities, shopping, reading, writing, family and so on. In fact, part A always focuses on general topics that should be really familiar to you. Many students seem to have difficulty in part A of the IELTS test when they come to answering questions. Sometimes they use the wrong verb tense in their reply. It's really important to take the time to prepare and do lots of speaking practice before you attend the examination interview. How do you know which is the correct verb tense to use? Well, the choice of verb tense you use in your reply usually relates to the tense of the verb used in the question. If I ask a question like, what do you do in the evening? The verb do is in the present tense. So your answer should use a present tense verb. In the evening, I play football and I go shopping. Play and go are in the present tense. If you're asked a question like, what did you do at work today? The main verb word is did, which is in the past simple tense. We are talking about completed actions in the past. Your choice of verb should also be in the correct past tense form. You might say, when I was at work, I ordered some paper and I delivered some products to a customer. The verbs ordered and delivered are both in the past simple tense. Now, if you don't speak English very much with your friends or your English teachers, then it's a good idea to practice before you go to the exam interview. Try to practice speaking with your friends, your teacher and anyone else you can. You can practice by recording your voice and playing it back and listening to it. You can also practice talking on the telephone, but the key is to take the time to practice speaking so that when you go to the exam interview, you can answer questions confidently. Remember, if you're talking about past events or actions completed in the past, use the past simple tense. And if you're talking about timeless things, facts or what you are doing at present, you'll probably use a, a present simple tense. Here are a few examples of questions. See if you can pick the correct tense in the question. What do you do in the morning? Do is in the present tense. Where do you live? Again, do is in the present tense. Where did you go on holiday? Did means that it is in the past simple tense. What film did you see? Again, did is in the past simple tense. What kind of car do you prefer? Do is a simple present tense. Have you been on holiday to America? Have and been is the present perfect tense. So your answer to this question might be something like, I have been to America. I went to New York in 2007. In this instance, you might start your answer with the present perfect tense, I have been. But when you start talking about something that happened in the past, you'll switch tense to the past simple tense. I went to New York in 2007. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should go into the exam simply listening to the tenses of all the verbs in the questions. Your choice of tense should be automatic by the time you take the exam, and your focus should be on the meaning and answers of the question. If you have trouble with tenses, you must do more practice. The key is to practice and do as much of it as you can before the IELTS exam. Don't forget that you can always practice your IELTS exam at www.etestme.co.uk.
You can take all four sections of the IELTS test here and it will help you prepare before you take the exam. Now in this first part I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about where you live. Do you live in a house or a flat? I live in a house. What do you like about your house? Um, well, partly because it's a house. It's big mm -hmm. and I've got my own room. A lot of space. Yeah. What is the area like where you live? Um, it's a very quiet area and only families live in this area. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend this area as a place to live for young people? Not really because... Well, why not? Well, there are only families living there with small children and weekends it can be really loud because mm -hmm. annoying sometimes, yeah. Can we talk about your family? Are you happy yeah. to do that? Yes. Do you have a large family or a small family? A small family. Can you tell me something about them? I've got a father and he's from Nigeria and a mother from the Philippines and I've got a younger brother He's 16 years old. How much time do you manage to spend with members of your family? Um, not much, because I don't see them. I only talk to them once in a while. <laughs> yeah. What sorts of things do you like to do together? Well, I guess that's watching TV mm -hmm. or having dinner together. All right. Let's go on to talk about learning English. How long have you been studying English? More than eight years. Where did you learn your English? Um, at home, and at school. What was it like? At school? Mm -hmm. it, it, it was okay. They taught us a lot, and our teachers are very strict. Mm -hmm. well, they're trying us to um, speak correct English and learn all the grammars. Is there anything you find especially difficult about learning English? Grammar. It's not really... It's something sometimes really unclear to me. Because I don't, I don't know. It's not really... No. What opportunities do you get to use English? Opportunities. Um, opportunities. Well, English is an international language. And it's good to speak English because nearly everyone does understand a little bit English, so it's no problem. How important is English to you? Um, English is very important to me. Um, Why? First of all, to communicate with other people. And as I said before, it's an international language. And it's always good to speak more than one language. Mm, thank you. All right, Liliana, now I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make some notes if you wish. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, I All right, here's some paper and a pencil for making notes. And here's your topic. I'd like you to describe a well-known person you like or admire. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Now remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when your time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Okay. Uh, the person that who I would like to speak is about Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, he is a writer. A famous writer. He uh, was a Nobel. He he won the Nobel Prize in literature, and he is from the north of the of Colombia. He's from the coast, and he's very famous because he has uh, written. He he's written about the every um, normal or. Mm, mythos about uh, this part of the country that is very um, exciting and interesting because they have a lot of um, histories 
and he tried to write very in a to begin a funny um, knowledge. He tried to to show how is this part of the the world that is very um, surprising every time, and also um, they try to to show in in a good way how is the another part of the world, another part of the country as well, mm -hmm. because our country many times we we hear that it's dangerous um, all of the time they, we have crimes but he he in this for example in a hundred years he thank showed you. that thank you would you like to meet this person yes i would like i saw him twice thank you actually. Now I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Okay. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Do okay. you understand? Yes. So, there's some paper and a pencil for making notes and here's your topic. I'd like you to describe a well-known person you like or admire. All right? Okay. Now, remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll okay. tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Okay. Uh, I should describe a well-known person that I would like to meet or admire. Uh, the, um, the, the, this person uh, is called Madonna by many uh, people. It's, it's her, actually, it's her name, which is given by her birth, in her birth. Uh, I would like to meet her because uh, I admire her um, um, uh, because she is a, mo the most popular singer. She's a legend and a pop icon in, in the world. She is well known pop star, from, and I admire her because of her background, because of uh, her, um, because she sings very well and uh, she's got nice songs, um, and she. Um, she inspired many people by her creativity and um, style and the fashion, fashion style as well. And I admire her as a normal person, as a mother of a son and a daughter. And what he's done in what she's done in uh, in her um, in the past that she supported many uh, organizations and funds many people. Um, and she earns. Uh, she earned her money by herself. She, she went with uh, thirty-four dollars uh, from home to New York, and she's got nothing be when when she came to the to, to New York. And I think this 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 that's the thing that I admire her. And she's everyone knows her. I mean, some people don't like her and think that she is uh, nasty and she did nasty things in her life and uh, because uh, she 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 was uh, talking too much about feminists about and uh, about some things uh, some sort of things which link with sex um, she encouraged many people to fight for for the right for their rights thank I you. think thank you do your friends feel the same way about this person uh, I think so I'm not not mm, most of my friends that didn't don't like her. I like her because uh, of her, um, of, because she's um, she's a legend. I think. Thank you. Right, we've been talking about the best best party you've ever been to, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related mm -hmm. to this. So, let's consider first of all family parties in your country. How do families celebrate birthdays in your country? Mm. I think it depends on the families. But it's, uh, my family is something like uh, you go to the restaurant and have a good time together. Something like that. Uh, and after that, uh, we have the big you know, cake and the candles. That's um, to indicate how old are you. So 
just only that. So, so that's, that's your family. Do you think it's the it's, same for other families too? I think it's quite similar because it's uh, mm -hmm. in Thailand when you have the parties, the main thing is you have to eat <laughs> the first thing uh, in the restaurant or in the house. That mm -hmm. is the, the first thing you have to do. The second thing is you have to have the cake. That's to indicate mm. that is a birthday. Do you think that um, that family celebrations have changed during your lifetime? I think it's quite similar because after, you know, I remember when I was very young so until now it's, it's the same. And it's, it's similar with other families, so I think it's not changed. So in this case, uh, in Thailand, the traditions are continuing, they're not changing. They're not changed. Mm, interesting. Yeah. All right, let's think about other parties now. Um, let's think about family parties and, and formal parties, the kind of parties maybe mm. you have in the office or in the university, something like that. What do you think of the differences between family parties and more formal parties? I think it's different in the costume or the course that they mm -hmm. wear. What kind of differences? Because um, in, you know, in the families, we can wear, you know, normal coats, something like this. It's an uh, outside coat, can, you can wear jeans, you can wear every coat you want. But you, when you're in the, something like formal party, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, something like work party, you have to wear a suit. Mm -hmm. And it's quite important to make, you know, something like a formal for more shoots for that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and but in the something like um, it's a party in the university, so you should have the long dress, beautiful dress, and you have to make your face very, very <laughs> fresh and and it look really nice, very really beautiful to and attractive. Do you think these kinds of social events, these kinds of parties, do you think they're important in the life of the school or the life of the university, the life of the office? Do you think it's important for us to have them? Yes, it's a, it's a part of socials. So, so why, why is it important? It's important because um, you can, you know, in the party it's a good time to communicate with the person that maybe you haven't known or mm -hmm. you have known them, but Maybe it's a good time to share your idea, to share what you think, and it's a good time to entertain yourself, to have the, you know something like some, to have a good drink, good food, and good friend. So it's um, so it's not not just you know just not just entertain in my idea, something like some some parties I can share you know something like some. Uh, my opinion in when when I want something for example. So it um, makes life easier in the office, for example. Yes, and mm. another thing is something like um, I have projects, and I cannot you know do do that project very well, so I can share with something like my friends who work in the you know law law fields, or my friend who works in the business fields. And my background with education, so... So it gives you so, a chance to communicate yes, with so others. Yes, so we can share with each other right. in the party. Thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you. Welcome. Well, we've been talking about a news story, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions All related right. to this. So let's think about the media in general. What do you think newspapers are really for? Mm, I think uh, newspaper for uh, it give us the uh, what something happened during our uh, surrounding hour and uh, give you lots of information about the area where you live and also about international news. Do you think that the way the news is reported is generally good? Um, in, in the different media and newspapers and television and radio? Mm, I thought uh, newspaper is quite good for our causes. Uh, it not just mean you, it's, um, how can I say? Uh, reading newspaper is quite, I think, is quite good hobby. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wh which reports the news better, the newspapers or television? Mm, I thought um, uh, they all, um, every, all of them have a day of uh, good benefit, mm -hmm. but um, I think television be better. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can see the the uh, the things immediately, mm. and uh, you don't need to imagine what will happening. Mm -hmm. So you just see it. So yeah. it more uh, in fact. Yeah. What about the radio? Mm. Is that a good way of learning about the news? Yeah, I think radio is uh, is quite good as well, because it's. Uh, you can you listening about it and you think about it. Mm -hmm. You talked about a surprising story in the newspaper. <laughs> How much do you think we can believe what we read in newspapers? Mm. I thought, in my opinion, you can just depend and believe about uh, fifth, uh, seventy percent. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because uh, when the article t uh, they are write down the things, they might put some of their, uh, their opinion, something like that. So, might be in not very fair. Mm. So, and do you think that's more likely with the newspaper or with television reporting? Mm, more like in newspaper. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why is that? Because um, it's um, if in the television. Then the uh, okay. <laughs> so, so, um, in newspaper they they need to think and uh, to write and make it perfect, mm. but uh, on television uh, most of things they are al alive. Yeah, in life. So, so. Let's think about journalists now. <laughs> what are the most important things that a journalist has to do in his job? I think um, his or her job. I think um, be a journalist, uh, they must be very fancy on their job and uh, be be true uh, about the things, and uh, they also need to help to find something to help the people, not just uh, uh, argue something. Do you think that when a journalist does his or her job, that they can actually change what's happening? Yeah, I believe that. Because um, uh, the journalists, they, they're being train, trained, trained about uh, how to write out the article mm. or something already. So, um, in, so if they like, they, they might be found some uh, another relevant to uh, to <laughs> um, in order to improve the or to um, okay, sorry. Thank you very much, Jean. That's the end of the speaking test. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about interests and hobbies, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. So let's think about hobbies now and hobbies in the future. What, what are the most popular types of hobby in Korea now? What do most people like mm -hmm. to do? Um, many Koreans like to read and talk about Mm. Talk about others, yeah. Mm. Mm. And some person uh, like to go to the movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do people like to do that kind of thing, reading and going to the movies? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I think uh, Korean people uh, like to the public, yeah, um, the gathering together, uh, not alone, yeah. Uh, so um, they enjoy, they enjoy together. They enjoy go together. Um, movies and talk about <laughs> yeah talking about this. what kind of things do you think people will enjoy doing in the future what kind of people <laughs> mm. what kind of hobbies will be popular in the future mm -hmm. uh, for the young people um, Korean people like to um, um, uh, more um, outside sports, mm. yeah, mm -hmm. um, like snowboard and um, mountain biking, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is more <laughs> popular. <laughs> Do you think it's it's a good way to make friends and meet people having a hobby? Yeah. Um, mm. I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sometimes people like doing their hobbies mm -hmm. a lot and they spend a lot of time mm -hmm. on their hobbies. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, to spend a lot of time on a hobby? Mm, it is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think it is a good thing. Why is it a good thing? Mm, it is more... Um, it is helpful, helpful to us uh, to relax uh, their life, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Are there any go other good things about it? Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Do you think maybe some people spend too much time on their hobbies? Mm. I don't think so. No? Yeah. <laughs> Is it possible to spend too much time on a hobby? Uh, it is possible um, only a special person, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, most of people have a job. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And is, is that difficult if yeah, you have a job yeah. and, and a very important hobby? <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a very interesting hobby, you, you, you like painting. Do you think people should have a hobby? Is it important for people to have a hobby? Or is work enough? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is important, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. to enjoy their life, mm. yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Suk. That's the end of the speaking test. Yeah, thank you. Well, we've been talking about interests and hobbies, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related yeah. to this. Um, let's think about the social benefits of hobbies. Do you think that so that hobbies do have social benefits? I think so. <laughs> so what kind uh, of benefits? Benefit. Um, so in my case, um, as I was saying, I I used to go fishing. So if I go fishing, I can relax, and um, we will pay money for to buy some fishing rod, fishing reels, uh, sometimes lures. So uh, lure or flies. So. I think it's good for social. Mm -hmm. mm. Is, is fishing a social kind of hobby? 
I, I think I hope <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and um, social hobby. <laughs> yeah, undoubtedly this is a difficult question. I think. Well, um, but I I think so honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and um, is it possible for people to spend too much time on their hobbies? Do you think? Well, I think so. Always hobby is expensive. Uh, for example, fishing lot. Um, when if I go fishing, probably I have to spend for um, six hours, seven hours, nine, mm -hmm. eight hours, I think, mm -hmm. or all night, all day. Right. <laughs> and why is that a problem? Why, why, if people do spend a lot of time? Yes, like a problem. Time, why is it a problem? Why could it be a problem? Well, I tend to, I tend to think. Uh, it's no problem for me, mm. <laughs> but uh, some of them has problem, mm. of course. But, but so what about for people in general? Um, could it be a problem? Could it be a yeah. problem? Um, well, uh, probably if someone has a um, very good hobby, uh, he wants to spend a lot of time for mm. hobbies, so uh, sometimes probably this person doesn't want to work, I think. <laughs> yes, also in my case. You mentioned a lot of interests that you have, a lot <laughs> yeah. of hobbies that you have. Why is it important for people to have hobbies, do you think? Um, I think it's not essential, but um, if we have ho hobbies, we, as I said, we can relax and we can enjoy. So uh, hobby, hobby always provides us um, good feeling, I mm. think, and good feeling and atmospheres, so mm. and so on. Thinking about leisure time now, in Japan, what would you say was the typical balance of leisure time and work time? Well, <laughs> uh, actually, I've, I've never worked in Japan, so I don't know exactly, but I think um, almost Japanese businessman has to work very hard mm. every day. So just for holiday, for example, on sun, just Sunday, um, they can spend their time mm -hmm. to ho for hobby, yeah. I think. Is it the same now as it was, say, 50 years ago, do you think? 50 mm -hmm. years ago, where um, I think, um, in my opinion, 50 years ago, um, um, it's difficult. Uh, 50 years ago, um, Japan, uh, all the Japanese people had more time, mm -hmm. uh, I think, because nowadays, um, now in J Japan has deflation, so it's d too difficult to get a job now. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have to work very, very mm -hmm. hard, extremely hard. So, um, do you think people have enough leisure time generally in Japan? Uh, it depends on people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the future? Future. Yes, will people have more time or less time? Uh, less time, I think. Even less? Yes, even right. less. <laughs> um, almost Japanese people like, maybe, uh, like working, I think. <laughs> Could be. So is work a kind of leisure, if they like it then? Yes, but uh, as I said, it depends on people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Ah, thank you That's very much. the end of the speaking test. Ah, thank you very much. Now, we've been talking about interests or hobbies, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Mm -hmm. Let's consider, first of all, current and future hobbies. Hmm. In my country, really, gardening is a very popular Gardening. hobby, but it's because of uh, um, necessity. People usually maybe grow potato or something like this just to, to, uh, to have a more cheap food. Are there other uh, popular yes, hobbies? Yes. Are the popular hobbies uh, maybe reading, uh, collecting books, because mm -hmm. it was very difficult to find, to find good books in, in recent times. But so it is really, really big hobby reading. Hmm? Why do you think? Really uh, such a big hobby. Uh, Just because it was difficult to find books, or is there any other reason? Uh, I think the, 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 there were few entertainments in recent times. Also, the, mm -hmm. there was no uh, a lot of good films and uh, a lot of some shows. So okay. uh, people 
indeed prefer to read good books and to entertain this mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. themselves. What kinds of hobbies do you think will be popular in the future? Mm. In the future, uh, I think uh, the same hobbies as in other developed, con uh, developed countries like maybe horse riding or uh, some sport activity are now very popular because there are a lot of equipment, a lot of facilities now, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the big, in big cities. So uh, even, uh, how, how to say, yacht sailing also mm -hmm. now popular. In, in Those are active <laughs> hobbies that yeah. you're, you're mentioning. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you think that in your country that that's that, that they would be particular po particularly popular compared with things say like the computer? Mm. Uh, hmm. Computer uh, are very popular, of course, and uh, most people play computer games and uh, surfing in internet. But uh, it's not very how to say uh, fashionable now, maybe. Mm -hmm. So. We, we have uh, a lot of other uh, possibilities to, to travel around country and to hunting, for example, fishing. Uh, there are a lot of places to do it here. Right, so here we're thinking about people's leisure time, mm. really. What's the, the balance between leisure and work in your country? Mm. Um, uh, you see, it's uh, when we speak about... Um, uh, for example, Moscow. Uh, of course, in Moscow, people uh, usually work uh, long hours, long hours, really, and uh, they uh, overwork maybe sometimes. Uh, so, uh, um, but uh, on the other side, they had a lot of um, uh, possibilities to ent uh, a lot of entertainment. Uh, there are a lot of. Uh, Casinos, for example, shows, cinemas, and everything. So, do you think the balance is about right between um, work and leisure, uh, or not? Uh, in, in Moscow, I think it's uh, it's about uh, right. But I'd prefer to have uh, shorter hours, shorter work hours, because uh, usually it uh, considered as. Uh, hmm. Uh, as necessary to work for top managers or middle managers uh, from nine to um, at least eight or nine, it's it's normal. And in consultancy agency, they work twelve hours, and uh, it's of course not very very well for family and for for health. Yeah, so. Do you think this will change in the future? Um, I'm I'm not sure that. Uh, that it will change in in nearest future. Uh, I think uh, the schedule of work will be even harder, stronger, harder, tougher. Why? Yeah, because uh, there are big um, big resources and not uh, markets uh, in general. Not developed so there are a lot of job to do and a lot of uh, money to earn so uh, companies uh, uh, companies now in Russia in, in, in uh, very much in a hurry to to reach uh, to how to say to develop very fast so most companies mm -hmm. now, now developing maybe twice or, or three times a year so it's no time to relax absolutely <laughs> all right thank you very much that's all right now we've been talking about interests and hobbies and i'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions mm -hmm. related to this so let's consider first of all current and future hobbies what do you think are the most popular types of hobby in your country uh sports Sports and, mm. uh, for example, uh, football. Football, I think, is the most popular one. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? I think, okay, first, fo football is popular in most places in the world, and uh, I think uh, it's an easy game to play when you're mm -hmm. since you're a kid. And also, the media helps, television and the radio. In what ways? They always show football, show football mm -hmm. on television, and they they always uh, any match they always show it on television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that helps, and the news as well. Football. Do you think the popularity of football is likely to continue into the future? Yes, yes, it will because uh, 
because uh, kids like football and most of the kids in my country like football and uh, they play it and it's likely that they will play it when they're older we will watch it so you don't think it might be replaced by something like basketball or rugby I think I think other sports will come more popular but football still is going to be very popular sorry. don't sorry don't know if, if it's going to replace like being the most popular sport but uh, but other sports are becoming more popular with football still the, the most popular so one. So there's something special about football? Uh, I think it's uh, the, um, the a good match is, is very nice to watch mm -hmm. and uh, and it's not that difficult to play for boys and our girls are playing it as well so that's mm -hmm. another, another thing. Yeah. Well let's move on to the the social benefits of hobbies. Um, do you think there are social benefits of having a hobby? Yes, I think that it keeps uh, people busy in doing something um, healthy or, or productive. Why would that be a benefit? I know for the society and uh, instead of doing maybe something that will hurt the society or mm -hmm. something like that, especially for boys that they can just use their free time doing something productive. On the other hand, do you think there are any dangers of spending too much time on a hobby? Ah, if you don't go to school and play football all the time, for example, or don't go to work somewhere and just sit in front of the television watching a, a match, maybe, yeah, everything in excess is not good. <clears throat> right, let's move on to, to leisure time. Um, a lot of people today talk about the balance between leisure and work. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what is the balance between leisure and work? like in, in your country? I think people work too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, more than, than the leisure. leisure the what why they why do, do you think that? Why do you think people work too much? I think because uh, I think salaries are not that high and people need to work a lot to, to provide themselves, I think. And also, uh, I think, on the other hand, professional people, it just want to go higher, higher in the job ladder. So Do you they think work this will much. change in the future or will it always be like this? I think it's changing now. People uh, realize that um, you can be productive without staying all day mm -hmm. doing, doing mm -hmm. things all the time. All right, thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test. Okay. Thank you. We've been talking about hobbies and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Let's consider first of all current and future hobbies. What do you think are the most popular types of hobby in Germany? For male Germans it's probably football. Mm -hmm. And for females it might be shopping, I don't know. <laughs> It could be shopping, but um, many people are actually uh, doing sports, so they would go jogging in, in their spare time. Well, why do you think these hobbies are so popular? Mm, because I think you need balance in life. Uh, the working life is quite hard, and nowadays mm. in Germany with the, the economic situation, etc., everybody needs an anchor point or a balance to their struggle during their working hours. Mm -hmm. So I guess just to have relaxation and to, to, to calm down and, and uh, as a stress relief, I think sports is a, is a good way to do so. And I think that's why how many Germans are doing it. It's probably worldwide mm. the case. Let's pick up on that point of leisure time. You, you mentioned that the, mm. the work-leisure um, balance in Germany is perhaps a little bit out of balance. Um, can you tell me more about that? Yeah, I mean, the regular working hours would be eight to nine hours a day. Mm -hmm. But nowadays competition is quite big because of the unemployment. So everybody is really putting a lot of overtime in their work and pro most of the time probably don't get uh, paid for it. And leisure time is increasingly, of course, uh, getting less and less. And so people are definitely looking forward to their ho holidays or their uh, weekends to enjoy family life. But I think mm. family life is, isn't that what it was before because everybody's so focused on their careers and to keep their jobs and have a good income and, and survive basically in the system. So, Do you think this will continue in the future? Well, probably the next 10 years till the economy again 
picking up and uh, our social welfare system is getting better again because it was quite good years ago. But the last 10 years, I would say, it really declined a bit. I see. Yeah. Let's move back a moment for, for yeah. on, on hobbies and think about the social benefits of hobbies. Um, what do you think are the social benefits of having a hobby? Well, it's depending on what your hobby is. If you would, for example, do a hobby where you don't meet anybody, if you are hiking or climbing alone, there's not a big social factor in that, I would say. But if you do it in a community, like, for example, soccer or rugby or what, whatever, uh, then you, in a way, share time with people and have the opportunity to get to know each other better and closer and uh, exchange ideas and, um, and opinions. So I think for that reason, a hobby is very, very important because usually you, you, you find there people who are not at your work, working environment uh, it's, it's, they are not part of your family, so they come from different backgrounds. And so I think you get a quite good insight into other people's opinions. So and, you get and to know them in a different way. In a, yeah, in a different way, because everybody's also relaxed. In your working environment, for example, I mean, everybody's quite formal and uh, tries to do the proper thing, obviously. But uh, if you are in, well, doing sports together, it's more casual, everything. And I think you would open up yourself more to the other person. So you think it influences the way we behave at work subsequently? Um, well, I, it could be, but uh, I don't think that it necessarily has to. It could be if, if you would have a hobby. I mean, it's just hypothetically now. Mm. But it could be if you have a hobby and, and uh, have good experiences with other people and are quite relaxed with other people that it would have a good influence in your, in your work, in, in the relationships you hold mm. at your working place. But that's quite hy hypothetical now from my point of view. <laughs> Do you think there are any dangers in spending too much time on hobbies? Uh, if you would neglect your family, yes. <laughs> if the hobby is more important than your family life, and um, in your working life maybe, then yes, there could be a danger that you lose track with what is going on in your relationship mm -hmm. with your partner and children, etc. Thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you.